Costas Ugrinis, who's going to make a presentation of, um, I think it's, uh, without saying too much, it's work with children and, uh, and uh, young people, because I saw a clip of a video uh, earlier, and I, I hope it's yours, it was really interesting, but it maybe wasn't. But welcome, uh, Cost Costas, and uh, yes, man, I, I'm sorry you had to hang around a bit, but uh, now it's your turn, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Trevor. Um, uh, it's really, uh, really nice to be in this panel. I think this whole uh, initiative and all this, uh, uh, you know, weekend, uh, I think is very excellent for people to exchange uh, all these views, especially when uh, we have, uh, you know, different attitudes and how things, you know, work. So uh, I think this is an excellent opportunity to to reveal these uh, these points when we we are the same and when we are different. And uh, I think uh, Michalis uh, gave uh, uh, an excellent uh, platform actually for he talked about how in Helsinki there is trust and people that do not trust, but in Greece they do not trust in general. So uh, time is really the issue here. And uh, what in this context, we try to create this kind of transformative change through uh, community empowerment. And this is what I will be talking about through the project we did with the schools. And uh, let's say the title is Community Empowerment Design Thinking and the Contemporary Major Culture. Uh, so, <coughs> what we do actually is create the, the possibility of change now, but actually our scope is for the future. So, one reason that we aim at schools is because, you know, uh, students are the, the citizens of the future, and uh, if they have Created, they have uh, a reason, a, a mentality, a, a know-how of how to do things with, uh, you know, with their own powers. We think that this will change actually society. So I will talk about uh, our uh, lab. Uh, it's a transformable intelligent environments laboratory it, at uh, Technical University of Crete, in the School of Architecture. Uh, we mainly focus on human-centered design. In general, we think technology can work as a medium to understand people better, to communicate with them to, through uh, space and, and people who communicate and uh, have a more uh, logical, more you know, useful environment for us instead of something that just uh, provides shelter. shelter. We have three directions in spatial economy, working on the optimal performance of an environment through time, spatial intelligence, technology mediated environment that supports human activity with sensibility, more, more than sense, and psychospatiality that we delve a lot in the area how uh, space affects uh, psychologically humans and how this can be uh, of benefit. So we've been working with um, learning environments. Uh, actually, the most work we do is with learning environments in different scales and uh, with different ages. We work also with cultural environments. We work with urban environments, mainly towards sustainability issues health environments and extreme environments actually regarding uh, issues of um, habitability and the sense of well-being uh, even if you are in in a difficult area so our framework uh, on how we operate it basically it, uh, it involves uh, the fourth industrial evolution uh, in the meaning that um, I believe when industry began, humans actually lost a lot of power to, to affect things. Um, suddenly all this production and uh, they, they start becoming dependent and this start rise and rise uh, as uh, we reach even automation. 
meaning that the products were a lot. We didn't have to do anything in a way, but actually we were very dependent, uh, creating a lack of freedom. This, I think, went even to social politics or other aspects of social life. And the fourth uh, industrial revolution, even if they, it, it, it's kind of promoted as a communication, a connection, uh, as it was told before, uh, evolution actually for me is, uh, is rather a reinvention evolution, meaning that while since everything can be connected, it means that it's again easier for humans to to get things on their hands. I mean, suddenly it's a tool that you can actually have a lot of power to use. You can stop to be consumer, you can be creator. So in this sense, we started from the hands. We're doing everything by ourselves. Uh, this was our capability. We were connected with things because they involve a part of us. And then the machines came and suddenly, as I said before, we were just, you know, uh, waiting for things to come. And now we have another dimension that actually can put all this thing in a kind of miniaturization, let's say, and suddenly we again have the power to do stuff by our own. Like a spiral, we, we actually crossed uh, a level and now we are on the same page as we are when we were primitives, but with different tools. So our approach is that we introduce new technologies in the sense that um, it's not something you only watch, you are not a spectator of them, you are, can actually you know, learn about them and, and, and work with them to educate them, so to open their minds and uh, let people explore. Exploration is a beautiful process. Everybody has it, uh, as, as you know, human race, or most of us. And uh, then you start understanding that uh, your world is open up. Suddenly you have, you have a lot of things that you actually can change. And uh, then you feel empowered because it's the next logical step. Since you can change things, actually you can do stuff to actually fit better your needs. You don't have to request permission. This is the subversion that Michali said. And then transform. Transform because now you, you have the tools to, to, to understand and do it and actually optimize. The other thing I feel it's important, it's not, it's not linear in a sense, it's, uh, it has a lot of uh, crossings, a lot of uh, synergies. Uh, it can actually uh, be different in any type of intelligence, meaning that we are not the same, everybody is different, see things in a different way. Some people are more, you know, emotional, other are, you know, more logical or physical, or they, they see things with different perspective. I love gaming for that, actually. Gaming allowed because it's the only thing we actually choose to do. It's not something it's enforced in a social context. Reveal who we are. For me, depending games uh, people play, actually understand them, how they operate and how they understand the world. And the other thing for us that it's very, very important, it's uh, the uh, participatory processes. Uh, participatory processes were always important in human society. As I said, at some point stopped to be because there were a lot of authority and production that didn't actually involve them. So suddenly they were just giving requests of things they didn't actually participate to do. And now this is emerging again in, uh, of course, through communication, but also because you can make an impact for us, a material impact. And like this playing between the virtual and the reality, uh, the, the reality. So we try to create basic toolkits to integrate tech into everything, meaning that in this way, everybody do not be afraid of that. They don't get just a, a smartphone and that's it. I mean, they understand that this can be integrated and actually change the, the way they see life. Um, 
first through design thinking. Design thinking is, you know, said for work. I think most of uh, people here uh, are, understand the, the notion, but it's not common uh, to people how you, you proceed in understanding a problem, define it exactly, start creating ideas about how we can solve it, so create a propagation tree, start doing prototypes, not just one. Today we have this ability to do them, test them and implement. And we go through a loop that we can optimize to change them because human life is, is unpredictable, things change, so people can always, if they did it, they have the power to transform it. And then the major culture that it's quite important in the sense that now I don't expect to buy something. I mean, I can do it. Here is a work of uh, one of my PhD candidates. He created this robotic arm with everything, everything did at, at the lab. Um, he didn't need to get to buy stuff. I mean, this kind of thing gives you a lot of confidence uh, and a lot of vision because you understand that you don't need someone else to, 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 to find it for you. Actually, in a, in a strange way, uh, I think the, the whole economic crisis helped us a lot to see what we can do with no money and actually starting to work on directions that uh, uh, unveil this creativity that along with the major culture that was already a reason, created this sense of, of, of a path. And uh, I think this actually gave us a lot of potential. And the third aspect of this, you know, trio of uh, design thinking, major culture is tactical urbanism, meaning uh, not in the sense of top down because it's used in this way also, but from bottom up processes that people actually can, can define their own needs in their neighborhood. They can re, re, reinvigorate parts that they are actually the, the way they are neglected, they may be, you know, trust sites and stuff or parking spaces and, and suddenly they take their own, you know, uh, in their own hands, the lack of their space and create something that is meaningful for them. It may not be meaningful for the other neighborhood, but it's for them and this is for very important. So in order to address that, uh, I'll show you actually two projects that it, it works as one, but uh, it, it's better to divide them. First, it's the, the, the facility. We created at Athens the first municipal maker space in Greece. Uh, and I think in the region in general that it's actually open to everybody to use it. Uh, of course, as it was said earlier, uh, something that it's there, it doesn't mean people will use it, especially if they do not trust at all, meaning that they think that it's another, you know, kind of, I don't know, you know, uh, thing that it's done, but it's actually not working or is, is, is said. And uh, so in order to do that, we have a very, very expansive program of, uh, of, of, having people there work with their hands. So we have a lot of do-it-yourself initiative, lifelong learning programs. We, we work with a lot of people with different ages, different groups. Uh, we don't actually promote it in a sense of marketing. We like the mouth-to-mouth -mouth kind of, of expansion of what we do there. It's, it's an active research. It's, uh, it's research to so doing, it's not like, you know, seminars or something like that. We have shared startups and small businesses, creative groups, and of course, uh, the, the schools of the city of Athens. Uh, we operated uh, because it was actually um, set up in, in the first Design for Better Learning program that I will go later. And uh, we operated in, uh, in um, the, the city of Athens, the municipality actually saw how this is, is, uh, is integrated in people uh, and through the evaluation, I believe that if it's to, you know, uh, expand and hold this uh, aspect that we believe that people will, will keep it alive, people will, will need it, they will want it. So, the, the, the demand will keep this place working and not, you know, um, 
uh, drop out or you know wear out eventually. It's located in the Serafio complex and it has its own spaces of 290 meters, but uh, the conference exhibition hall there is another 600 square meters that we actually use for uh, the open project. Here are uh, some of uh, the equipment we have there. We have 3D printers, we have laser cutters, we have CNC router. Uh, most of them are uh, the laser cutters and the CNC routers are of kind of industrial level, you know, a small industrial level, but still they have a lot of capabilities of doing things as microelectronics for automation and robotics. Now, our goal is to help people of all ages and all, all levels of experience. So we do not, um, we have a lot of parallel programs that are age appropriate and because they are hands-on, this is totally uh, going with the team. It's not, we, we enforce, it's something it develops in every team that is very interesting for also the tutors because it's always something different. Uh, we bridge the digital cap and we build technological literacy in the sense that a lot of people, when they start, they don't believe they can do that. A very important aspect for us is promote gender equality in high tech spaces. Uh, our numbers show that we have like 72% uh, that they are actually uh, women in the, in, the, in the groups that uh, for us it's excellent to have created an environment that it, it not sounds off. Uh, uh, regarding gender issue, women that they are not involved in high tech. Uh, we support particip participatory approaches between stakeholders, not only the immediate involved, but also uh, others. Uh, introduce techniques to government and interested parties uh, to implement them in uh, their profession and interest. Uh, meaning that they have the ability to do stuff there without uh, going through additional costs and train and empower teachers to connect and design thinking with maker movement. This is actually teachers that they do everything by themselves. It's not something we just, so they're not people there that do it for them. They have to learn how to do it. Uh, and this is how we want to work. Also, we train municipal, municipal staff to ensure the future reparation, but also change a bit the mentality of how the municipality operates. We create a novel operational framework with all of that we has, uh, I've been saying. We advance synergies between local governments. Already, I think, Trevor, we, we previously have a, a little discussed that it's in the Serafio complex that already there is a lot of synergies between the groups being there, but also with universities and research centers. We want to have a, cre a, a, a creative and supporting environment. They feel that they can do everything they want there. Uh, fuel creativity and experimentation, power up the imagination with knowledge. Here is a, a, a student band that uh, they actually designed from themselves in high school and they embedded electronics to it. And this is our program uh, regarding digital skills. It's a way to teach digital skills, but not for the sake of them. We teach digital skills because in this way they can do what I showed you earlier. So it's, it's a different aspect of why you learn something. It's not for your resume, but you actually want to achieve something. So it proved to us that they are, you know, they are more engaged in learning and they conquer it. They can use it after. It's not something that they just, you know, uh, took along the road. So we see some projects here, product design or outdoor. This is uh, the green rooftop for the home project with MIT School of Architecture and WWF. This is some kind of uh, beans that um, are clever beans for recycling with TEDx Athens. Uh, projects regarding uh, automation, STEM events for schools, open days. Uh, and our vision is to become the catalyst for a broader paradigm shift that people can actually do stuff when they, they, they can identify need and they actually can do it without, you know, waiting for someone else. And of course, to branch out and embrace multiple target groups. So I'll, I'll just go through some pictures of how this all uh, is happening at Serafio, where the, the, 
make space it's located. Um, and uh, the emphasis for me to see that uh, the, the, the people actually uh, uh, doing it for themselves. So we'll go for the design for better learning programs. This was a program in a way to change the aspect of how kids uh, see the school, it, to change the image of the school and the use of it, the appropriation of it. So the image, it's, it's kind of false perceptual, meaning that how they feel about it, what it means for them, and uh, the, the, the usability, the, the appropriation is how they can feel it's them, it's theirs, so they can actually do stuff with it and it's not something that they just go and, and, and leave. The program started in April 2016 and continues to uh, until today, at least until 2021. Uh, the COVID situation uh, created some things in general that uh, it, will, uh, it will continue to operate. We have 7,500 students and more than 600 educators. We began with 24 schools and uh, added 48 new in all seven districts of the municipality and we have uh, built two supporting education facilities the maker space that you just saw and the environmental education center now the participatory design process is that we have a lot of discussions with all people and uh, as michali said again it was trust it was a lot of trust building uh we need a lot of time to 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 create this kind of sense that we actually participate with all the, 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 the teachers and they all have uh, a sense of uh, these are good ideas but they, it's not actually working it's very difficult to, to pass through uh, this level and to to go through a negative feeling of everything uh, is happening uh, we have a, a very uh, distinct methodology that we can actually go to a heretopia, as, as I call it, to go to a different place where we, we don't carry our biases and the bugs we have from our life, and then start working in a different place where we both are, you know, uh, innovate in a way, we are new, we are free create planning, create targets, and then start with the children working on how we can implement that, uh, what kind of, uh, and after we do that, we have a vision. And when we have a vision, it means that it's very easy for them to know the skills, to learn the skills, um, to, to go to the next level. And then we start making it and we always making it age appropriate. It, it doesn't matter. We, we work with kids from daycare until uh, the, the high school, 18 years old. So we have a lot of different posts. And then we go something that uh, in general for me it should always happen in in creating spaces it's not uh, you know so evident evaluation and assessment so they have the ability to to redo it to change them to to scrap it and do it again because most of them are, are done with reusable materials also so i'm going through some uh, pictures again to see how the spaces were before and after and we see how the the, the children themselves the students wanted spaces to enjoy the view but also have more social spaces than the the other one they wanted to relate more to their issues to have you know uh, to be closer to their interest this is a school with a, a lot of uh, you know green uh, programs to be taught outside we have uh, you know a climate that allows a lot of outside teaching that it's usually not done uh, to create scale appropriate uh, this is for children garden so they actually created their own you know places in the whole school actually uh, or give more identity than just be there create specific types of landscaping and feel uh, in that um, neglected spaces they are very uh, usually uh, around schools that can actually be used with with something that it's fun uh, and uh, go to the educational places that uh, it's more toward product design 
these things are designed and and manufactured by the teachers and that um, and and the children and in general the the school communities uh, so they can change the whole you know equipment the accessories on how they 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 learn how they are in school uh, what they use for for you know enabling children to um, to teach competencies, to, to, to learn new ways of how to address a problem. And uh, a, a lot of uh, these structures actually change the landscape at the end because, uh, you know, the, the, the scale, <coughs> as I said, differs. And uh, even uh, because of uh, quite um, strong participation of, of the parents' association, we also uh, managed to do three tactical urbanist projects, some in the area outside of the school, uh, some in the public squares, especially regarding how they will uh, go through summer. And uh, they needed, you know, a place to, to go because especially in the economic crisis, uh, a lot of kids wouldn't go to some uh, vacation. And also, Regarding the, the needs of the parents, like uh, here, uh, Benty is specific for, you know, having the kids and change them and uh, feed them, uh, breastfeed them. So the parents themselves created, you know, goals that they can actually change the community. So for us, this was a very important step because we want the school to become again a center of the community, a, a, a port someone from, from there on, they can start changing things outside the school, which is more easy to do. And also uh, outside in the park, this is at Hanya, uh, actually at the Florent Fauna Park of Technical University of Crete, where a lot of schools go and created some kind with the, the, the kids, some kind of, of arrangement that they can find this place more adequate to their need. So uh, before I close some, uh, uh, you know, numbers regarding the evaluation we got from the first phase of better uh, design for better learning, uh, we have a, a vast majority that they thought that this was a qualitative transformation of the school environment. We didn't go there to just solve issues regarding technical problems. This was uh, to to have very specific, very very focused changes on things that would, will change the perception of the school. Uh, I didn't show it uh, uh, actually, but uh, 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 some aspects that were very important was to change the gates. So to think that this is something different than, you know, uh, rather a prison or a neglected space. And we also changed the, the restrooms because the restrooms proved the, the worst part of the school. And a lot of kids didn't even want to go for that reason. So changing only the restrooms was actually a very significant thing. Um, positive disposition towards school was a very important uh, for us uh, indicator because it shows with what kind of mentality you go. Uh, a lot of uh, great intellects regarding education theories say that uh, children are allowed to learn. They are they are predisposed to learn, but they must feel like to do it. So if they don't feel like it, they do not learn. So for us, this is was something very important. Uh, increased participation of students in class and the, all the, the classing activities, this was also a very big number because um, we, are, uh, we, we have done it a lot of year with uh, a lot of uh, smaller projects, but uh, when it went in this scale, it actually showed much more potential. Another thing that was great for us was that teachers changed their methodology. I mean, we expected a number around 15 to 20 because when you, you go to change your, you know, everyday practices, this is something that it requires quite, uh, you know, stamina, strength, a lot of stuff. Uh, the 43% was for us a great start. And uh, now we think that this number actually grows because we have created a trusting uh, area that we can actually address teachers 
Uh, empowered teachers and students, 86%, they felt that they can do more things, they can take things on their own. And we have a very, very strong support from parent association and high participation that show that the community needs that, needs something different than the, the you know, the usual program about teaching. This is, this is, uh, was very uh, great for us too. So our future steps is to expand our project in Athens. We have a more expansive program in, gen in directions, actually. And um, now, uh, regarding COVID, that it's, it needs to change everything. Uh, actually, we, we, we change our, the whole uh, operational program for the third time to, to go to this digital approach that we actually have things that they have, uh, you know, the equipment and prototypes that they, they share in their space and us, and we walk through them. So we actually have the materiality, but also the, the, the virtual kind of teaching. And uh, actually we're very proud of it because um, it's something that we haven't seen actually happening so uh, in, in somewhere else. And uh, we really want to see how it goes. We are optimistic, of course, but we have to evaluate it. I'm not sure how it will go. Uh, we started uh, actually this week. You the have application. To, uh, yeah, it's 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 the, it's the last it's the last uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> the application of both programs at Kenya, and we also discussed with nine municipalities and the regional administration. Here, I want to say that mostly are the parents and the teacher comes, and they have kind of forced this kind of administration to come. So this is our, our uh, motto to help people learn how to make their own better world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, I bumped in right at the last. I was, wasn't quite sure that was it. But I think it's hugely <laughs> expiring. I mean, this, uh, this coming from this, uh, the fourth industrial revolution to these maker spaces and then to tactical urbanism. Um, as a flow was really was really incredible so thank you for that and uh, some wonderful uh, images uh, at the end to see how you actually I mean this this the, the notion of empowering communities and um, in, in this way is being tackled so wonderful example thank you very much